country. And so actually it is a restating of the principles of education which Bhaiya Ji has already practiced in the uh, Manipur schools which I want to narrate now. So actually I was really overwhelmed and thrilled to listen to all the students and experience of the students about the Bhaiya Ji. I am a bit unfortunate that I could not uh, get acquainted or get connected with Bhaiyaji. Uh, but uh, anyway, because every experience one cannot take in one's lifetime. So, first of all, I bow myself in front of the great memories and the great person, teacher, patriot and uh, uh, sacrificing life of Mananiya Bhaiyaji. And he has not only preached the things, he has practiced the things. And it is always mentioned that uh, helping hands are more important than praying lips. And that's why I bow down my head in front of the memory of Bhaiyaji. I also thankful to Jevan Konvilkar sir. He introduced me to this great function and uh, to the PSVP. Similarly, I could, uh, I thank to Dr. Uh, Leela Patil and even Pallavi Madam we are meeting now on this uh, online webinar. Similarly, I was uh, very much excited to listen to Alka Vaidya Madam and uh, Veena Madam who has devoted their time to uplift the or to train the faculties of the three schools. And I'm very grateful that I am here to speak something on national education policy with respect to school education. Now, first and foremost thing that I would like to say is this national education policy is now accepted by the ministry of the government of this country. And within a short span of time, it will get a nod from the parliament and then it will be a policy of this country. But we should not wait for that. We should start implementing the spirit of the national education policy. I would like to enlighten or I would like to state some three to four basic principles of this national education policy at the school level. The very, uh, what you can say, a revolutionary idea which has put forth by this policy is early childhood care and education. Now we know that in our country, the first standard is started from age 6. Students are getting admitted to the first standard at the age of 6. But the neuroscience shows that 85% of the child's cumulative brain get developed from 0 to 6 years. And for this 0 to 6 years, all the students or all the kids actually, they are left with their parents, they are left with their families. No doubt, families will take care of them like anything. But unfortunately in our country, around 25% of the population of this country is below poverty line. Can you expect their parents to take care of their kids in 0 to 6 years because of the, uh, what you can say, financial crisis and many other things. And that's why this policy has taken up that responsibility on the shoulder of the education ministry that no student from the age of three to six will be left without taking care. And that is the reason why I call this as a, a very a revolutionary step for early childhood care. Because we know that the various levels of neglect and deprivation in early childhood is the root cause of deficiencies in development of critical brains of the children. And one has to take uh, care of that. And so excellent care, even nutrition, physical, emotional hand-holding, nurture is a must for all children. And this policy ensures that we will take the responsibility on our shoulder and we will do it with the help of primary schools, pre-primary schools, NGOs, the Anganwadis, and they have called this as a Balavatika. And so I think that this is a, in a way, brilliant step and taking care of the 
early childhood care. So this is the first uh, thing which I would like to point out. Second is, in this policy, it has mentioned that the structure of education will change from 10 plus 2 to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. And the first file is nothing but pre-primary, as I told you, where the first three years will be experiential learning, just singing, storytelling, playing, having interacted with the uh, teacher, Anganwadi person. So they will enjoy everything. There will not be any writing, reading, nothing. It will be like a play group. And that's why their emotional hand holding will be there and they will get acquainted with many facets of the life and the cumulative development of the brain will be ensured. Then in the first five stage, there is a standard for one and two. But remember in this also, the curriculum has to be developed. Flexible, play-based, activity-based, discovery-based. Actually, I should not call it as a curriculum also. It should be like I'm giving an experience to the kid and it's very difficult because we are not trained in doing this. And so I think that uh, uh, Alka Baidya Madam and uh, Veena Madam, the experts of this field, because I'm not an expert of, uh, uh, in a school teacher because I'm at higher education and teaching higher education students is the most simple thing in the world because uh, uh, so I'm not expert but I think that uh, we should take care of how to design this curriculum for standard one and two with play based, activity based, this based learning so that is the one very important thing this policy has told then the next three five plus three stage it is nothing but age group eight to eleven standard third fourth and fifth for that they have very clearly mentioned that if at all the syllabus is reduced it will be okay but there should be a foundational literacy and numeracy is the ultimate objective otherwise we know that there is a lot learning no understanding, number of things are put forth in, uh, in front of the students, they are cramped in their brains and so that's why there is a natural, what you can say, uh, uh, comment that the, at the tender age students are creative and our schools will kill their creativity and uh, uh, just uh, make them sakshar, literate and not educate. So actually this policy has taken care that in this third, fourth and fifth standard, no doubt they will be introduced with reading, they will be introduced with writing, language, art, science, mathematics because numeracy is also important, then sports and physical education, that is very important. Another important thing in this foundational literacy and numeracy is this policy has rejected the barriers between curricular, co-curricular, extracurricular, vocational